to me, one of the key levers to be pulled out here to accelerate this work is payment reform. You get what you pay for, and our health care system's been improperly incented for a very long time. Um, you, you know, um, Mark was mentioning some of these approaches to eliminating waste, for example, and Virginia Mason Medical Center up in uh, Seattle um, is very focused on the to Toyota production model value streams for their for their care all very patient focused doing the right thing they've been very successful not only in improving their safety profile but also in eliminating waste there's a tremendous amount of waste in the healthcare system because of the inefficiencies of our processes and so where they've eliminated waste they've gotten paid less because the because the payment system does not reward for the right types of things so what we have going on now is better than what we had before in that we're starting to focus payment actually require quality and safety outcomes um, for payment and not pay for things that uh, that uh, shouldn't be happening but I always liken that to putting lipstick on a pig what we really need is we need to change the payment system entirely we need to be you know the whole movement potential movement toward accountable care organizations and essentially population based payment is also key to what has to be done here there's a lot of money in the healthcare system being spent a lot of it is being wasted with inefficiencies of processes it goes back to the fact that the entire healthcare system in the US was really built up from a journeyman's model around you know the old days when a single physician could take care of everything and we kept adding you know more complex medicine and technology and process but we never took the time really to change the chassis and we haven't been focused on uh, process improvement our, our dollars for innovation and, and R&D go into medicine and technology but not into delivery models and we need to change that um, and it's all kind of related but as long as we continue to pay for volume driven um, medicine, we're not going to get to the point where we can uh, use our dollars more wisely. And part of that, it's not just paying for the tools that are required to deliver safer care and for our, you know, giving our um, provider system the uh, resources it needs to move down some of these paths that we now know to be effective. Um, it's also redeploying the dollars so that we can take the burden off the acute care system and start to pay for um, the development of delivery models that are more consumer oriented and that um, support the acute care system. There's a lot of care being delivered in the acute care system that doesn't belong there and it exacerbates the problems that we've got that we all now recognize from all this work that's been done. Um, and so you got a little bit of a chicken and the egg thing, but I think um, the payment system revision is a key lever here. I also, um, if I were to say, if I were to do a list of things that we need to focus on to get the work to move forward more quickly, it is always leadership. It is, this is all about culture change. We are changing um, a very established culture. That's the context within which all of this work needs to be done. Um, you can't um, practice safety science and use root cause tools and get effective error and near miss reporting in place if you don't have a culture that's receptive to that. I think there's been an unbelievable amount of progress in that regard in the past 10 to, we've been in this business since 97, so I would say more than 10 years, but um, the fact that we now have physicians um, being transparent about errors, um, apologizing to patients, there's reporting of things that go wrong, um, there is open disclosure, that was unheard of in our culture 10 years ago. And to make that much of a change in the, in the culture and the context within which this work has to occur is really nothing short of a miracle in this period of time, and it set the stage for a lot of things, the use of these tools, root cause analysis, safety science, human factors work that came into our industry when the patient safety work started. And Mark made mention of the fact that uh, CQI and TQM didn't use that. Way back in the early, late 80s, early 90s, when Lucian Leap started doing research in this field and looking for safety um, data in the healthcare industry, of course he found none. So he went outside the industry with his colleagues and ended up in a different place than the quality improvement guys had been because they were looking, he was looking for safety and error information. And we discovered all these fabulous tools that we've deployed and imported and have been in the business of uh, translating into application for healthcare. So there's been a tremendous amount of work that's gone on. It's also allowed us to better understand just how complicated our processes are and how inadequate they are in many instances.